Sorry. Sorry. All right. So he said, next year, I'm going to get some potter's wheels, and you're going to be one of the guys that I'm going to teach how to make pots. And, uh, and he did, and I did. And uh, so I started learning how to throw on the potter's wheel while being in, in high school, which is an interesting time. And uh, because you get 45 minutes for your class and you get uh, 20 minutes to mess around with your clay and then you get 20 minutes to clean it up. And uh, so there's not much time to do much uh, other than learning how to clean it up. <laughs> and so I got pretty efficient about being neat and tidy. And uh, I didn't know about bringing uh, coveralls to make my, make my dress uh, uh, work for the, for the task. But nonetheless, I learned how to make some pots. And then, uh, uh, and then I went to, to graduate to, to school at Western. And uh, I studied there, uh, got the, the uh, bachelor's degree, and then went off to, uh, to Pratt Institute in New York City to, to uh, learn further how to make ceramics. And uh, so that was kind of the round of the, of the education. And then after getting a degree in ceramics at Pratt, I ended up teaching for a couple of years, uh, and they needed a ceramics teacher for their uh, graduate ceramics program. And so they didn't see anybody else on their horizon in the whole big city, but me. <laughs> and uh, so I was able to, uh, to uh, get, get started uh, teaching as well. And uh, that lasted a couple of years. And then uh, we uh, came back to, to uh, Seattle and I set up pottery here in 1974. And in 1974, I set up a, a school, or a, not a school, but a, a teaching. Uh, I wasn't teaching. I was I was making. I was being a being a producer. And uh, so I set up a pottery and made pottery uh, planters for a long time. And uh, so I made these large planters for banks and offices. And uh, uh, I had a friend that was designing uh, these spaces and inspect my pots so that was a, a way to make a living and uh and then so i was making large planters that were like 18 by 18 they were like 75 pounds of clay and i'd throw them all at once i figured that was the easiest way to to produce stuff rather than to set up molds and all that other stuff and then uh it was pretty labor intensive so uh, and I was young enough and I was able to drink enough beer that I was able to produce a lot of pots. And, uh, and, and, uh, and then I, uh, somebody came by once and they said, how would you like to make me a sink? And I said, oh, that, sure, we can do that. And then I was able to make a, a planter uh, 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 that was, or take the same amount of clay I was using to make a planter and cut it by a third and make a big bowl it was 18 inches in diameter and, uh, and put a hole in it and charge twice as much as I was making for planters. So guess what? I started making plant or making sinks and I did that for about 20 years. And, uh, and we'll show you some of those uh, uh, photographs uh, when we get, or actually we can start showing those now. Go ahead. Okay, here we go. Click it. Oh, okay. So this is uh, one of the uh, things that I also did was tiles and some uh, murals. So I did murals and this was a dental office uh, uh, that uh, we designed the, the mural and I did lamps for them and then uh, sinks for their, for their operatories. And uh, uh, we'll see some more of those. So just go ahead to the next one. Uh, this was uh, uh, kind of an example of how the sinks uh, evolved and the tiles kind of played back and forth with the, with the sinks and the slip patterns. Uh, uh, and so this was, oh, you know, I think this particular job, there was a, a bathroom, uh, a, a, um, a bathtub as well that was involved with this. So go to the next one. Uh, this is a, a different job, uh, obviously, uh, 
another pedestal sink. Um, and uh, so I, I got figured out how to make make the uh, flange on, on the big on the big sink. And the, so this is about 20 inches, 22 inches uh, diameter and uh, stood about uh, 30 inches tall. That, um, this was uh, another mural. This was just on some commercial terracotta tile, uh, but it was about six feet, uh, about four by six feet um, over a fireplace in a residence. Um, just simple um, using using the design of the and, and the and the painterly quality of the of the media. So try the next one. Well, it's just. We saw that one already, so let's keep on going. What? Unless somebody's got questions. So that was uh, this kind of a gargoyle uh, element uh, that I was playing around with as well, and uh, uh, it evolved into some fish patterns that I I worked on later. Uh, this was the uh, was a little more embellished than was meant for outside that had feathers on it and stuff. So it was that really weather worthy, but it was cool. How big is it? Uh, this is about uh, 14 inches tall and about uh, 14 inch diameter too. So go ahead. Uh, this one shows uh, a gargoyle faucet as well. It looks like it's got cropped a little bit, but there's, a, there's another shot of this, I think further on, so let's go on. Sorry. Oh, well, that's all right. When I blew them up, they I may have lost. That's so. I tried to send them in, in a regular format. But anyway, this is a, kind of a sample of how the sinks lined up in, the, in a dental office. Uh, they end up with, they were good clients because they end up with a dozen sinks or so in, a, in an office. And so um, I got to work with a designer and co color coordinating patterns on on the sinks and uh, it was a nice feature. It sort of warmed up the environment uh, uh, that, uh, that took away from that sterile aspect of being at a dental office. So try the next one. Uh, I, I have a question, Mike. Sure. I'm looking at the far sink and then to the right of that, it looks like possibly yeah. another uh, piece of ceramics. Uh, we had what uh, we called, um, um, well, they're uh, like trash rims. Uh, yeah. uh, so they're like a little six inch collar that mounts on, on the sink and then you just threw your used cups or tissues down into uh, the cabinet below. Yeah, that's, I thought that's what that was. Uh, yeah. Nice. <clears throat> These are a couple of sinks I just made for a, a friend of mine. Uh, and, uh, you know, he wanted something that was a little wind uh, uh, to go with some pine, uh, it was around his house. He lives at Pine Lake. And so, uh, I whipped up these sinks and they're sitting in the living room now. So, uh, there's another story about that, but we'll go on to the next one. I think that's it. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. Well, I'll walk around the house here and, and show you some of the some of yeah. the collection. Unless somebody wants to ask some questions about sinks. Yeah, I have a sink question. Yeah. Um, my name's Jillian, and um, I'm not. I don't have my video on because I'm not feeling so well. I'm curled up in bed, so I'm just gonna leave okay. it off. But um, I wanted to know how big the the hole in the bottom for the drain is. I mean, I know it depends on the clay um, shrinkage, but how do you figure that? Well, you calculate your the shrinkage of the clay, and then the diameter for the drain. Uh, there's a tolerance that that has, uh, you know, there's not all an exact fit. So it's mm -hmm. about an inch and five eighths, an inch and three quarters for the hole, for the for the for the pipe, the the, the drain connection to go through, mm -hmm. and as the uh, uh, a metal flange uh, that sticks out on the top. And then below is a rubber gasket uh, that's secured with a nut with the, that comes up on the plumbing, on the, on the inch and a quarter uh, plumbing size. And so um, it's fairly 
uh, it's not rocket science, uh, but you take a look at well, like a, a drain uh, assembly and you can see how, how it goes together and, and how much tolerance you have. So figure out your clay shrinkage is 10 to 12% approximately. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then you just make that whole size a little bit bigger. Uh, and, uh, and that's, that'll give you the calculation you need. Okay. Do you kind of drop down into it smoothly or do you kind of make a place for the, the metal part to sit in there? Before uh, the there's, hole, a, you know? there's a little indentation in the bottom of the bowl that yeah. uh, accepts, accepts that metal flange. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, um, and then on the bottom side of the sink, there, like I said, there's a rubber, uh, rubber gasket that uh, secures with the nut uh, yeah. on, the drain of the, on, on the drain itself. So then it goes from there into the P-trap and the, uh, right. uh, and it's, it's uh, I think that my measurement was like, I ended up calculating it and then I, I got a, uh, um, uh, a drill, like uh, a whole size drill, which was mm -hmm. about an inch and three quarters, I think. And that's, uh, that all worked out to, to shrink down to the size that was appropriate. So I, you know, it was, it was easy to count, easy to make. Uh, okay. So you actually yeah. made it one and three quarters and then it shrunk to fit just right. Yeah, that, that you know, you could probably try it that way and let it get you pretty close. Okay. And the sinks, uh, how, do, how thick do you have to make them for them to be really sturdy? Well, they're, uh, they're not like a thin bowl. Uh, they're about a half, a half to a quarter inch in thickness. Okay. Uh, you know, the rims I've made a little bit thicker. So, uh, and they were kind of mount, most of them were mounted on top of the counter. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the flange uh, of the, of the, uh, of the bowl uh, hung out on, on the counter. And, uh, um, and so the whole size for the sink was smaller than the, than yeah. the outside tension. Uh, that sounds, they're really nice, they're beautiful. They make, uh, it's so much more personable than those just normal porcelain white sinks. Do yeah. you have to do them cone 10? Like, is it, or can you- I require an like... electric cone, cone six. And oh, okay. cool. uh, so there was not any, uh, anything unusual about that. Um, you know, it's, there's uh, uh, lots of, uh, it, I didn't get into the, all of the uh, vitrifications and, and the, the stuff that uh, like, uh, commercial sink manufacturers were dealing with, you know, they were concerned about glazes not crazing and, and uh, being more sanitary as a result of all that. But uh, it, it works out just fine for uh, a, a bowl to, you know, normally production potter type bowl and glazes to work out for is what I was offering. So, okay. It sounds like a really fun way to make a living you can charge for them and get really creative and there's no handle yeah yeah it, was, it worked out just fine for me and until until the market then the chinese started bringing in those uh glass sinks and things and and everything sort of disappeared so uh i think that there will be another cycle back for the uh the aesthetic of all of this and uh, and you know if i live long enough I might be able to do it again <laughs> do any uh gooey duck sinks <laughs> i i've got an answer for you what kind of guy do you think i am <laughs> a guy that will carry a gooey duck around with him uh to <laughs> restaurants and and other you know <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, that's, an inside, yeah. that's an inside joke. Yeah. So actually, <laughs> that gooey duck was not made by me. That was that gooey duck was made by Greg Federici of Salty Dog. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it, it's you know, you get a gooey duck and you got to take it as far as you can go. So. Well, you took it all over the place. Hey. <laughs> so the platter is about twenty inches in diameter. Uh, these were a series of platters that were produced by. Uh, Pottery Northwest uh, for fundraisers, and uh, various artists would decorate them. 
and then they would be sold. And so this is one of a few that I have in, in the collection. And uh, I've got two of these patties. Uh, there's another one here, which is uh, Tip Tolens. And uh, so um, you can see how, it's, I think these are some decals that she had made or, or some painted images that she put on on the on the platter so it was really nice to get various uh, artists uh, work in this way uh, I'll show you a couple more over here um, the the large the tall one here I'm not sure of the artist I think it was Larry uh, and I can't remember his last name but we know this one is another one of Patty's uh, she did both of these at the same time. And then there's a George Rodriguez. And then uh, the, the, the Halicorn uh, pattern is uh, another artist I'm not for sure of right now. But, um, and here's Beth Kavner Schechter. Uh, it's another larger platter. So, uh, so I'm going to focus on a couple of pots here that are right. Mike? Yeah. Did anyone else get to buy a platter? <laughs> or did yes, you get them did. all? <laughs> well, th this was over several years, you know. And, oh. uh, and, uh, and I, I did have a, I did miss a few of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a Josh Deweese uh, large jar. Uh, and next to a Wally picture, Wally Bivens. Uh, you can see Wally's picture is pretty good size. And then Josh's piece is, uh, well, I guess that's about 30 inches tall. Um, and the stuff here on the, uh, on the, on the table, uh, that's a Jack Troy uh, uh, wood fire piece, uh, fairly recent uh, on this, uh, uh, bird bowl is uh, Robin Hopper, and Robin was uh, uh, a leader in the uh, ceramics uh, uh, education forever. Uh, he's now passed away. He lived in Canada. And then um, this picture in front of you here, the green one, is one of mine I made several years ago and found it. Uh, uh, where you find these things is at the <laughs> kind of like it was, up, it was upscale from the garage sale. It was at an antique mall. So I ended up buying it back. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to walk around here. Uh, this is a Matt Ortiz pot uh, from Mexico, a uh, large piece. Uh, one of Juan's relatives, as most of the people are down there. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the one right to the right of that one? You one to the it. yeah, so just a little bit to the right, a little bit right. more to the right. That one. What's that one? That's a wood fire piece by uh, Ken. Um, uh, I can't remember his last name. Uh, he's uh, did the wood firing uh, at, at Hoods Canal at, uh, at Oh uh, Lundmo? Lundmo? Yeah, Lundmo. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And it's a it's a nice large piece and it's got lots of variety and ash on it. It's uh, beautiful. I'm loving that black and white piece next to it. <laughs> oh, that's got some really beautiful. Yeah. But this one? Yes. Uh, that's a um, a German artist and I bought while I was over uh, in, in Germany, it was a show that was really, it does have a nice glaze on it. Uh, it's just more. gooey, yummy. Yeah. He was also doing some other pieces that were, uh, uh, he was making a lot of stumps. Uh, and so there would be like a, just a, uh, a like a 10 inch vase, uh, like about 10 inches diameter. Uh, that use these fancy glazes on them. Uh, hey, Mike, can you zoom in on that piece one more time? Because uh, this one, yeah, 
That is a wild glaze. Yeah, it's just, just really nice. The face cool. down there near the bottom. <laughs> a little to the right, there's like a. Thank you. Okay. So uh, this is uh, the one in the foreground here is uh, a Japanese artist, uh, Shiro Otani. And uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, it's got, there's a lot of red copper that's in there and it's a wood fire piece that he uh, created and fired about two or three times. Um, the piece behind it is a large uh, Raku piece by uh, uh, Deals, uh, uh, it's a couple in Oregon, and they were making these guys uh, uh, with these large uh, leaf patterns on them. Um, and uh, Dave big and piece Barney. of that group. And, and then focus on this piece in the back here is that's a uh, Gail Nichols, mm. and. Uh, She's famous for her soda firing, which she doesn't do any longer. And uh, she was here in Seattle doing some workshops. She's from Australia. And uh, this piece in the front here is uh, also uh, a friend of ours, Reed Ozaki. Yeah, Reed was our last presenter. Yeah, I know. It's got one of those those little dragon eyes things on yeah, there. Yeah, beautiful. And uh, this piece, the large piece, is Patty's. Patty wears China. I think she. This is uh, like creation of life. Uh, it's got the serpent there in the middle of it. And uh, the woman's trying to put herself together. <laughs> Patty's still trying to put herself together. <laughs> We're all trying to put ourselves together. I uh, know it's it's that's a good thing. Uh, and then uh, this piece on the uh, focus on here is uh, uh, Andy Nassis, and uh, this is unusual. And it uh, it looks raku, but it's really. Uh, uh, he uses low fire glazes and refires them several times and uh, comes up with uh, uh, glazes that look uh, look like they're raku, but they're, they have a nature of themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful work. So I'm going to walk around here a little bit. So there's another picture of Wally's. Uh, uh, this is a Jerry Newcomb large jar, one that he had won an award at Bellevue Arts Craft Fair years and years ago. Uh, and since then, he gave up making ceramics and he just does glass now. He's still working in glass? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bob Spurry said that uh, Jerry Newcomb was one of his best uh, students ever. He, he he just had a real knack for engineering. Yeah, yeah, he 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 was he was a genius with with everything he touched on on technically, and, uh, and then he ended up with a glass. He does uh, he makes uh, clay um, um, patterns. Uh, extrusions and then he cast his glass on top of it hmm. so this is a horse of wallies in the background here it's a tall piece about oh 20 inch 30 24 inches i guess it is and this is a one of the foreground here is uh <clears throat> regner's uh regner reinholz who has left us now but This glaze on this piece has been uh, sandblasted, and uh, so it's got a real matte 
finish on it and it's very eroded. Uh, you can see all the crackle and craze within the glaze. It's really quite Fantastic. interesting what happens when you awesome. blow it off. Yeah. It looks a little like chert that you might find on the beach that's been tumbled around. Yeah, exactly. And that's an excellent that surface. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Do you know who the potter was, the one with the snail on it? Uh, yeah, that one is, um, Con is Jim, Jim, Jim Connell. Connell, yeah. And then this is another large raku uh, platter of the of the deals, uh, which I just got recently. Um, this is uh, Sequoia Miller who's now being an art director up in Canada, I think, after he got a degree in, at Yale. These bowls here are uh, um, made in uh, Ecuador and wood fired or pit fired. And uh, wow. they don't really have a glaze on them, but it's a like a shellac <coughs> that they kind of uh, take the shellac sauce and throw on the pot. Wow. This is a, a crystalline glaze. I don't know if it shows on the, on the photograph, but um, just the white porcelain. This is a soda fire, one of my pots. It's nice. Um, the black piece there in front or in the middle is uh, Anne Herondale's. And um, this other, other horse, another smaller horse of Wally's. And um, this is another Jerry Newcomb pot. Jerry made lots of pots, and he, this is a big piece. He was, he liked his uh, um, copper reds, so he did a lot of those. There's a couple of Akios, a couple of small cups. Little treasures. And then uh, this is another Anne Herondale. That's kind of a generation that she's working on pots lately. The, the black one, that, that black teapot before was uh, stuff she was doing architectural, but she's taking the forms quite differently now. And this rabbit form is uh, the Matt Ortiz uh, piece and a couple other pieces, Matt Ortiz. This is one of the one of the artists and a young person just started off and made their own little marks and uh, as opposed to the refined marks of the one next to it. The bowl of Wally's, a folded bowl. And this is a a piece of uh, John Page. John was making some pots. Uh, this it looks similar to uh, Chihuly's. Uh, here's his interpretation of Chihuly's. And uh, so he called these pot chulies. <laughs> I hope you got a kick out of that. <laughs> this is a Steve Sauer uh, wood fire. And uh, these are those sinks I was showing you earlier. Closer. Sure, Mike, did you just make these sinks? Yeah, these were uh, well, six months ago. Okay. Yeah. I don't wow. get a big call for them anymore. So when, uh, when I get requested, I have I have some this already. Call me up. I'll make I'll glaze one up for you. Okay. <laughs> Do a little selling here, you know. Uh, that's a Wally piece, that, that uh, orange one. Uh, this is one of mine, uh, Soda Fire, a while back. 
And uh, bowl on the floor there is Tom Coleman. Uh, this is a, a piece I picked up wow. in an store and it's the salt fire uh, German made. Uh, it's actually the, the there, there are two separate parts or, and there, there's the base on the bottom and uh, and then it had the same glaze on it and a lot of the same images. So I put them together. This large picture on the top was uh, was uh, a separate piece, but I I show them together. So there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, to get an idea that I'm not just into clay. This is the yarn painting of the Witchell Indians. <laughs> And they, they have their, their own images. And this mandala in the center is a peyote leaf that they use as part of their image. So is it that fabric? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's actually wax uh, surface. Uh, and then they, they take uh, thin yarn and then they make the images out of that. So they take the and they take the yarn and they just press it on to the to the wax board, and it and it stays. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's what about how they, that sweet little pot beside it on the mantle there? The dark one or the white one? This one? Oh, I was thinking at the dark one. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's Is that like a dragon? One. Yeah, it's got a little dragon spout on it, and the one the white one in the corner is. Uh, is like a, a Thai figure, a Thai pot um, from Thailand, and uh, it has it just happens to have the same sort of pitcher bowl effect or pitcher bottle effect. Are those and, uh, old or new? Well, the the dark one is mine, so it's new. The other it's one is beautiful. Uh, it's not terrible; old. it's contemporary. Okay. And then. Uh, I'm going to walk around here and show you one of Ken's. This is Ken Turner. You know that guy? You ever know him? He, he made this when he was a young man, you know. Yeah. Wow. Couldn't do it today. Wow. And gold was cheap. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, uh, Steve Gardner is, uh, is the make, maker of this other image. Wow. Uh, this one is uh, Damien Drava. Mm. Damien's pretty talented with this soda firing. And this is Wally again. Because instead of making a horse body, he makes a horse head. I like that. That's nice. And uh, this is a Don Wright. Mm. Famous potter. That. A big pot, big salt fire. Wow. Uh, this is a Tamba Japanese pot jar. The one behind it is a, a Shigaraki, also Japanese. I'm just going to walk around the room and show you what's next here. Uh, one of the things I've been doing in uh, with COVID is uh, I've collected a lot of uh, posters and, and uh, gallery cards that have been mailed to me over the years. And, and I just started making collages. So this is a collage and it's got a glass on it. So it's got reflections, so it's a little hard to view, but I'm just gonna show you a couple of those as we go around. Um, this is uh, another set of Kind of pictures and bowl uh, pictures that I've collected over the years. Uh, the jar in the back there is Wally's. Uh, the foreground is uh, Jeff Shapiro. The woman with a handle on it there is uh, Tara Wilson. And uh, is that you in the middle? What's that? Is that yours in the middle? Uh, mine was a picture in the end there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and then uh, down below here is um, 
uh, this is a, a Dan Doach uh, doing some big firing from in Montana. A uh, couple of smaller pieces are Sugar Rocky. And look at this, another <laughs> Kent Turner. How about that? You, you got any more of that blue glaze? I do, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't eat it. Yeah. It's not good for you. No. And then this is another read of one of his uh, recent soda firings. That's beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Comes apart, too. <laughs> Two pieces. <clears throat> That's a Don Wright's picture here on the bottom, on the floor. It's a, about 14 inches. Behind it is a uh, another well-known potter, Carlton Ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a phrase that he they had stuck on the wall at UPS, uh, throw them big, throw them tall, like Car FC Carlton Ball. Uh, this picture on, or the print on the wall here is, uh, can't really get the full reflect, full because it's got reflection on it, but that's a, a Peter Volkus print. I yeah. uh, really like it because it spoke to all the energy he put into the pots. Yeah, that's and, pretty awesome. And it was also a lot, a lot less than one of those pots. <laughs> and this is a Robert Sperry, the and a little better idea. It's a, about 24 inches across. And uh, and here's another one. It didn't make it up on the wall yet, but uh, it's uh, the same image. He did a series of these. Uh, I don't know how many he made, but they're pretty pretty special pots. Really cool. Looks like a fossil. Yeah, it does have that. A couple of collages and another couple of wood fire pots. This is a John Benz piece. Uh, another Damien. An idea of those. Um, I'm going to go into the other room here and show you some dinnerware. And uh, this is a set of uh, uh, John Glick's. Uh, mm. As I was uh, being a young potter, uh, he was uh, one of the heroes that I put up on the pedestal. And I always thought that I would love to get some work of his. And uh, so, and I heard that you could make an order, but it'd take two or three years. And uh, I never got a list. But recently, I was looking through a gallery in, in, uh, in Michigan, and uh, he had um, uh, worked with this gallery. John had worked with this gallery for uh, quite a while, and they just did a retrospective of his work. And so they, they had um, all these, uh, this set of bowls and a few plates like these. And uh, so... I decided that I couldn't live without them. And so thanks to UPS and the checkbook, they arrived <laughs> on my front door. Nice how that works. And I, yeah, and uh, it was, it's gotta be careful what you want, you know. So this is a Kurt Weiser teapot. Oh, yeah. And I really, you know, it's nice to see people who can handle drawing and, uh, to the degree that he can. That's amazing. Yeah, and it's so simple. You know, it's just a, a slip on on the surface and then uh, graffitoed into. Uh, this is another example of draftsmanship, and uh, uh, this is Beth Lowe. A large bowl and it's got drawings on the outside as well as the images on the inside.
Hey, Ken, do you know what this is? I, I am stumped. Okay, it's a uh, 3D print. It's <laughs> a computer computer generated ceramics. Yeah, there you go. And then this is another Damien down here. He does amazing. He has a recycled electric kiln that he turns into a soda kiln. And, uh, and he gets these fantastic things out of it. He paid, uh, he paid really good attention at that Gail Nichols workshop, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> so this is a Rob Fernell. Ah, how about large, that? Large nice jar. Water jar there. About 18 inches. Yeah, that's a beauty. A couple more of those. I got collage. I got collages everywhere now. This is a uh, Matt Ellison. Nice. And uh, one of the ones he made actually before he went to Japan and got his doctorate degree. Um, this drawing on the wall is uh, a friend of mine who's actually a famous potter. His name is Jeff Schlanger. He's in uh, New Rochelle, New York. But I think he's more famous for these drawings because he takes his drawings in a, in a big pad of paper and he sits in a, in a jazz studio or a jazz concert and, uh, and draws these, these amazing things. And We're seeing it sideways. There, there we go. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I wanted to get it all in there at once. So. so you can see the energy in them. Ah, he was enjoying that show. Yeah, he enjoyed enjoys a lot. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Here's a Rakoop place platter that I, a piece that I made. I, I was just trying to draw, and I was drawing some, some uh, uh, like a violin player, at, and so that's that's what it, that's how it can come out if you if you work at it. You take it off the sketch pad and put it on some clay. These pieces I'm going to show you here are. Uh, Commercially produced, uh, but they're designed by uh, uh, Frank Stella, the famous painter, uh, who makes these big field paintings, you know, and you see them in airports and big office buildings and huge museums. And uh, but they, he was doing, he did a lot of prints as well. And so they took some of his prints and then they produced these plates. And uh, I was fortunate to find them. and. I just fell in love with them because I, I like the image and I like the plates and, you know, I can impress friends when they come to dinner and tell them they're eating off of Frank Stella. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah. So you're going to get to come over and try that out again. All right. I look yeah. forward to it, Mike. Uh, I know. I know. Me too. So yeah, I got some glass and unfortunately I, I, I like that too. Uh, and I like Venetian stuff that's got all this odd dragons and stuff like that that kind of pushes my buttons. You know, that's my my tribute my tri tribute to glass. This is another um, Sperry's, uh, like a playing with his glazes, his crackle glazes, and then uh, some some sumi brushwork. These are some uh, mask, uh, the, the top head there, one with a cap on it is a, is a tip to one. Uh, this is an Esther Sharamizu. Uh, and then uh, around the corner here is a, is a Mike Moran. Uh, Mike uh, used to teach at Evergreen. And uh, this is another is a print of uh, Patty's. Um, she did. She does quite a few prints. 
<clears throat> these pieces on the floor, uh, they look, they're very attractive to us potters you know, because they have that sort of raccoon image that um, kind of we're all attracted to, all the glazes melt. And, but they're actually not, uh, they're clay, but they're, they're uh, glass crucibles and they're from Japan. Uh, they're probably a couple hundred years old. Mm. Wow. We can, we can imitate stuff, you know. Um, let's see if I can, let's see. Show you this. It's, uh, it's a big photograph of, of a piece. This is Beth Kabler Schechter. Beth uh, uh, had this recent work that she's been doing. It's been pretty pretty dramatic. It's all very dramatic, but um, it, this is a, a, a boa constrictor wrapped around a, 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 a hare, a, a large rabbit. So we kind of made it around the room. You guys got the nickel tour. Wow. Uh, very impressive, Mike. And I, you know, <laughs> I know this is not all of your work. I know you've got. Uh, yeah, you've we've got, got a warehouse. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. But uh, this is pretty impressive. Well, I have to show you one last piece here. Or one, one piece I just bought. And this is a bowl that I made. And it came up at a local auction. And... Uh, and two people called me up and told me about it. And uh, I said, well, gee, that's interesting. So I, I, I had to bid on it and I bought it and I brought it home. So this is a bowl I made in 1982. <laughs> oh, cool. Very nice. Yeah. And it actually, it's a, it, you know, it's the assess, essence of a sink without a hole in it. So it, it made it less valuable than when I was making them. <laughs> but uh, so got to watch out for what you want, you know, it'll, it'll keep coming back at you. Boy, that's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I went to Lauren's Lucan studio this last weekend and I bought one of my pieces and I got, oh, yeah. a John, I got a John Ben and, All uh, right. yeah. So yeah, you know, every once in a while <laughs> they do come back to you. They do come back. They do come back. Well, I, uh, if you get any, got any more questions, I'm happy to. Well, gosh, Mike, um, what? When did you start collecting your work? Well, as soon as I could, you know. Yeah. When you know, when I was in New York, for example, I, I tried to buy pieces while I was there, but. Uh, it was not often very, it was more expensive than my, my budget wasn't able to cover it and, and uh, didn't have extra money so that way. So, um, but I would, I would like to have gotten a couple of pieces of Karen Carnes that I didn't. And, uh, and now they're a lot more money, but, you know, so I've always had a, an idea to collect and to get more, get stuff. Uh, and, um, you know, it's nice to, uh, to, to buy some things from your heroes, like that stuff on the, on the table that John Glicks, uh, those are, those are very special to me. Yeah. And, uh, um, and, and I got, and I got Ken's too. I got Ken before he was famous. <laughs> now, you know, obviously just no one can afford it now uh, <laughs> <clears throat> that's right um i'm assuming you don't have animals or small children in your house uh no but uh, no animals. there's no, so many precious no. things down low I... Anim animals are welcome but uh, small children are questionable <laughs> <laughs> uh, no it's they're uh, you know, I just play them kind of casually, but, uh, you know, they're, they're not, you know, I, most of the time, I, 
they, they live just fine with me. So. Uh. Can you talk a little bit about how you acquire your pieces? What um, do, do you go in search of particular work uh, or a particular artist or do you, uh, do you go to auctions when they come up and, you know, if you see something that, that you like, bid on that or? Yeah, I do both of those things and I like to follow artists and uh, I like to support uh, fellow artists. Uh, you know, I've got uh, Mark and Lace's pieces on San Francisco and and uh, it was nice to run across the, the new and creative work that they were doing. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I was, uh, I'm a little embarrassed because I'm not able to show them because they're, they're still packed up with the, with the moves I've made in the recent past. But, uh, uh, you know, it's where, it, it's where I find it. Um, you know, it can be at uh, galleries, it can be at antique stores, it can be, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's out there in front of us all. And uh, uh, you know, I just try and try and see what moves me. And, and uh, so I go to like, there's a Japanese uh, antique sale that comes from Kyoto. Uh, uh, it shows in Seattle a couple of times a year. And I bought a lot of, uh, a lot of antique pots. Uh, um, and then, um, and, you know, there's a lot of tradition that, it's connected with ceramics here um, and it all comes from Asia or a lot of it comes from Asia. But uh, so it's wherever I can find it. Uh, and, uh, you know, try and try and go to kilns, uh, kiln sites and to, um, you know, I've went back to um, Omaha, for example, to uh, visit June Kaneko's studio and see uh, uh, what, uh, how his monumental uh, creations of work and, 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 and how he's established himself and to see his collection. And I'd like to buy some of those things, but some of them are very expensive. And, uh, and you know, I don't, I don't really need a six foot dongle in my backyard, but uh, <laughs> You'd like what to I'd have like one, to though. have it. <laughs> I'd like to have it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, and you know it doesn't have to be that 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 highly recognized stuff, but uh, um, you know, for example, the print I showed you of uh, Volcus, you know, I think that has as much energy as a lot of his major ceramics pieces. Uh, you know, if you look at that print, you know, I'm looking at it now, and you know, he actually took and stuck his fingers through the paper and and had red background uh, printed uh, so you can see the red background through his finger holes. And that's the kind of energy that he put into the clay. And, uh, and it's, it's really a terrific example. So I'm, I'm happy to get that stuff. And, and I keep looking for it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a, that's a beautiful um, print. I, uh, um, yeah, it, it is a print, correct? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. I I could see it through the even with the reflection. I could still see the image and yeah. you know the stack and yeah. I, and uh, what's the what's uh, Susan Simon uh, uh, at her gallery down oh, Frisco? Sandy Simon. Her, Sandy, yeah, the, she's got some of these prints now for sale. And, right. You know, in terms of, of value, I think they're 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 Priced really reasonably. In fact, they're priced less than what I paid for mine. So mm -hmm. it, uh, it's great. You know, you, uh, you got to be careful what you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, does anyone, uh, any of my students have any questions for Mike? Or Mike uh, also was a gallery owner. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff. Big patron of the arts. Yeah, try, try and support it. Keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Keep it young. Keep uh, it we, young. Yeah, we we need more high schools with with art programs like you guys got. Uh, get this stuff, get this stuff spread around. 
But, uh, like I was saying originally, or when we first started the conversation, is when I started this stuff when I was in high school. You know, I had a bent for art, but then Clay, Clay took it over, and uh, and it started way back then. And uh, now I'm just about 75, so I got another 25 years to work on it. At least. <laughs> we hope. We hope. <laughs> You mentioned uh, uh, Mark and Liza, and yeah. you introduced me. Well, you had brought back um, pieces from yeah. California with, mm -hmm. when you went down and visited them, and, and that was my introduction to their work. And I, I would highly recommend you guys uh, Google <laughs> Google these these two because their work is really outstanding. Um, mm -hmm. Thank One of the, yeah, yeah, no, it's it just uh, really it it just tugs at my heartstrings. I I love you guys' posts, and um, whenever I get an opportunity to see your work, um, I wish I could run down to San Francisco and see your show right now. <laughs> but you, uh, it is spectacular. It really, you is. had uh, uh, work in a show together. Um, where was that Germany or in well Europe? we were in, in a show in the Netherlands last Netherlands. year and then this year um in a gallery in, in southern France Gallery du Don oh um so we it, it, unfortunately it opened um like the week that they had shut the whole country down and no one could travel more than 10 kilometers from their house you know yeah France was but, super strict it was it was really bad timing. So it was March and April, but they're keeping the work throughout the summer. And the, already he says that uh, the gallery owner says that uh, people are just flocking there. So we're hoping for some some sales this summer. Uh, well, hey, I've, I, I've seen a. Uh, I was, was going to mention that I've seen uh, a couple more uh, uh, people doing low. Uh, what soluble salts uh, glazes uh, and was, there are more people yeah. now yeah 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 it's it's it, it's and they all have a different uh, different flavor for them it's really nice you know nice nice to see the creativity and you guys are you, like it's like Ken is saying you're you're lead, you're cutting the edge baby yeah. <laughs> well this last year I mean I've developed an entirely new body of work during the pandemic because everything was shut down for a while. And uh, it's very exciting to be showing it now. Uh huh. Great. Hey, well, next I time you're in the Bay Area, <laughs> stop on by. I hope to. I hope to. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta go down there and keep you guys honest. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All well, right. Well, um, Mike, have you got anything else to? To uh, add? No, I, you oh, know, it, I really like, I like doing this because I got my house cleaned up. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. And uh, so now, I, now I'm ready for guests. Well, uh, yeah, now I was gonna say, now that uh, COVID is over, right? I mean, no, no yeah. you know, across, yeah, the, come across on, the nation, come on down. it's all opened yeah. up. You go, um, yeah. we'll all be lining up at your door here. Okay. <laughs> well, it, we got the barbecue working, so it's all it's all ready. Jeez. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I hope you guys got something out of this, and uh, uh, you know, if any if any follow up questions need to happen, I'd be happy to, to go with it, and I can uh, I can make a little sketch of what the diameter of the of the hole is for the sink if you want to. So. <laughs> well, you're uh, very generous, Mike. By the way, uh, Mike was talking about going to Jazz Alley last night for Greta Matassa. Um, I think I mentioned to my class that that we went and saw Lisa Fisher together. Oh. And the whole time, Mike was sketching uh, images of, of her. And uh, at the end of the night, he gave myself and my wife one of the sketches. Yeah. And he oh. gave a couple... I think they were just strangers to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hanging out. He gave them 
a really nice uh, sketch that he did as well. So, and just kind of blew them away. So it was, uh, you're very <laughs> giving and uh, well, it, it's really nice of you to do that. Well, it's, it's, nice, it's nice to be able to share. It's, it's a way to connect to the world. Uh, yeah. I'm, hap I'm happy to do that and this too. So it's great. All right. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. You have an amazing great. collection and yeah. beautiful work. And that's just part of it. When he pulls the rest out, he's going to do phase two. Wow. <laughs> See, you need a booster shot every once in a while. It's like a museum yeah. in there. I mean, I've, I've yeah. been to the Crocker Museum. You've got way more. <laughs> they've got. Oh, I've been to the Crocker. they got way, they got way more. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All but, right. Well, listen, cool. um, I don't want to you know, take up any more of your time, but I really appreciate you coming in and, and uh, presenting for us tonight. And I want to thank Mo also for, for her excellent camera work and technology to help get this uh, together. Uh, it was a it's, little it's, sketchy about five o'clock. I was wondering if it was going to come together or not, but, but uh, I think it, it all came off really well. And uh, I just want to thank you both so much for for uh, presenting to my class.